Hi everyone, welcome back to our Illuminating Traditions, a little holiday um, celebration. So today we're going to talk about the celebration of Yule. We've done Dawi and Advent and Hanukkah and Christmas lights. And so now we're on our fifth week. And so this is, as I said, um, the holiday of Yule, which celebrates the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the whole year. So the sun goes down really early and we have a lot of darkness that day. And then it starts all over again and the days slowly get longer and longer until we come to spring when we have a lot of sunshine. So this is a chapter book and we're reading one chapter about Yule. And this follows a little rabbit called Rupert. And this is called Rupert's Tales, The Wheel of the Year. And this is by Kierna. Rupert's Longest Night. Rupert the rabbit raised a paw to stifle big yawn, knowing that there were still hours and hours left until the dawn. It was hard to do this, staying awake all through the night, but he was determined to wait for the new day's first light. For hours and hours he had been hiding by a tree, watching and listening, being as quiet as could be. He'd listened and learned that Winter Stolsis, or Yule, was this Sabbath's name, and to celebrate the return of light was why everyone came. He'd learned that true winter would begin the very next day, and for these people, tomorrow would be their New Year's Day. Rupert had visited these people many times over the past year, and had come to understand that from them, he had little to fear. Still, there were times when he wished he had the power of human speech, for no matter how much he learned, he knew they had more they could teach. When he'd made his way earlier to this special place in a thick grove of trees that was kind of round space, he had looked for the young ones, all the girls and the boys. It hadn't been hard to find them with all of their noise. The children had their own shelter, a strange thing they called a tent. Close enough to the grown-ups, they could see where the children went. For hours, the girls and boys had played and danced and raised their voices in song, but they were sitting quietly now in the shadows that had grown dark and long. Around a small fire, they had gathered all together, trying their best to keep warm in the cold, frosty weather. One boy said, I wish we could make this fire really, really big. Another agreed saying, hey, we could find some branches and twigs. Oh, no, said a girl who had seemed quieter than all the rest. I'd like it too, but when it comes to fire, our parents know best. But without a fire, how will the sun know to come back to us again? Tell me that, said a girl all dressed in blue. Will it come back at all? And when? Stacy? Your mother's the high priestess, said Bob, a boy with red hair. Shouldn't you know all about the seasons, the sun, the moon, and all of that? Here we go again, thought Rupert, looking around and rolling his eyes. Next would come all the questions about the whens, the whos, and the whys. If you will all be quiet and listen to what I have to say, then I'll tell you all I know about this night 
and the coming day. But you must remember that like you, I'm still just a kid and I don't know everything or what everybody did. Because I'm older than you doesn't mean I'm a crone and very wise. Sometimes you have to figure things out with your own heart and mind and eyes. In fact, some of you might be a little surprised to find out that it's true. Some say that Shawan was is both the end of the year and the beginning too. But what about the sun coming back? The boy with the red hat wanted to know. And what about winter and the light? And oh, can you tell us when will it snow? Long ago, before we learned about planets, the sun, and the changing of weather, on winter solstice, the people would try to guide the sun by gathering all together. They would pile a lot of wood and light big fires to help make the sun strong. They would build their fires very hot and high, and then they'd sing lots of songs. That's why we have so many lights hung on our holiday trees today, as a reminder to the sun that we want him to come back our way. My dad says that starting tomorrow, we'll have more hours of daylight, but that's when winter starts, said the girl in blue, so I'm not sure he's right. Oh, he's right, said Stacy, and I know that seems pretty strange, but that's exactly how the wheel of the year is arranged. Just when it seems that the weather is getting awfully cold and that winter is just about to really take hold, right then is when we always get a special reminder from above that God and Goddess fill our world with laughter, hope, and plenty of love. A boy with black gloves said, and confusion on his face, raised his hand in the air. Go ahead, Nicholas, Stacy said, nodding. Ask your question if you dare. So, even though we have long, dark nights and cold, short days, Stolsis reminds us warmer weather is on the way? Yes, said Stacy with a smile on her face. You have it exactly right. But we still have some celebrating to do on this, the year's longest night. I have already told you about the lights that we hang on our trees. What about other decorations do we use? Can anyone tell me? Rupert smiled to himself, leaning closer and stretching out one long ear. He was eager to learn more about the Sabbath and the wheel of the year. The bright star, one boy called out, all the way at the very top of the tree. Mistletoe, said Emily with the green scarf, where my daddy kisses me. The garland. the garland and the yule log and remember the wreath too these were all things that to rupert were quite strange and new we'll start with the star said stacy way at the top of the tree do any of you know what it is can anyone tell me nicholas raised his hand isn't it the pentacle all shiny and bright Stacy nodded. It's for the four elements along with the spirit. That's right. And the green and the red mistletoe that is used today to steal a Yuletide kiss is a sacred plant used to make a promise you don't want to go amiss. And the garland, said the girl in the blue, we used to wrap it round and round the tree. Besides being all pretty and sparkly, what does it mean for you and me? 
That decoration is for the goddess in a cycle that never ends. From mother to wife to widow she goes, and then back to mother again. Doesn't the Yule log come from the Druids and the worship of the trees? It's supposed to bring good luck, said Bob. That's what my grandmother told me. We have a piece of last year's Yule log in our own fire right here. My mother brought it to give us all good luck in the coming year. And what about the pretty wreath that was on the altar earlier today? Can you tell us about that one too? asked Nicholas. What do you have to say? Well, the green branches in the circle come from the goddess, if I remember right, with the red berries, the pine cones, and the holly from the god on this longest night. We put them together to celebrate balance and to bring us luck that's good. The new year should bring us all many blessings, said Stacy. Oh yes, it should. There are other symbols we use to decorate and bring in the new year. Tinsel and icicles remind us of the spring rains that will soon be here. We use bright bells of gold or silver to clear and clean the air, to call friendly spirits, if any are listening out there. Rupert was amazed to hear the children speak of all of these wonderful things and delighted by the glitter, reminding him of the sparkly fairy wings. But one thing we must all remember, no matter what else you do, these decorations aren't really what should mean the most to you. We're all safe and warm tonight, together by our toasty fire here. Still, we need to remember more than songs and symbols and holiday cheer. The winter solstice is the longest night throughout the whole long year, reminding us that it is the warmth of the sun we all hold dear. We stay awake all night, even though it's really hard to do, to thank the God and Goddess and all that they give to me and you. But what if I can't stay awake? Asked the girl in blue. I really need to know. Yes, agreed Emily. Then the, the sun stay away and so will all of the snow? Don't worry, said Stacy. I can tell you the wheel of the year will still turn. It really doesn't matter, even if the Yule log refuses to burn. To remember the Lord and the Lady is the most important thing tonight, as we are gathered here and wait together for the New Year's first touch of light. Rupert was happy to hear that falling asleep wasn't something to dread because he'd already seen one of the children crawl off to his own bed. Perhaps we could sing a song to help us stay awake. By the time we're done, Stacy say, <clears throat> sorry, Stacy said, maybe the dawn will break. And so the children did sing just a verse or two, not for very long, for when it was done, all but one had fallen asleep during the song. My mother said you might come, said Stacy, and that I should watch for you. Rupert was happy that the girl had seen him and she knew what to do. For even though the sun was finally coming back as well as longer days, his eyes were heavy, his head was nodding, and he was beginning to sway. The girl gathered him up in her arms and held him close to her, humming a quiet tune while running her fingers through his fur. As his eyes were closing, he remembered all he'd learned about the coming light and decided that winter stolsis or Yule was a very magical night. Yes, the wheel of the year was turning and a warmer sun was on his way, 
and in the girl's arms, Rupert felt happy, and that's how he is going to stay. Wasn't that nice? Well, let's go do a Yule ornament to celebrate this season.